Marvel Studios EDP Victoria Alonso says that diversity and inclusion is really just about the money. <laughs> and part of me is almost like, wow, a bit of good old fashioned corporate cynicism. That's almost refreshing, really. <laughs> on the other hand, I'm also like, uh, hold on, what universe are you in exactly? Because I'm in the one in which Woke Ghostbuster was a massive flop. The one in which Terminator Dark Fate finally put that limping, decrepit franchise in the dirt where it belonged. And where Charlie's Angels for a brief second resurrected and then swiftly choked the hell out that franchise once more. Get woke, go broke may not be an ironclad rule, but it is most assuredly a trend, an easily observable one at that. But it's not quite that simple. This is in regards to Marvel Studios' What If animated series, which endeavors to ask the important questions, the big questions, the really universe-changing ones, like, for example, what if Captain America had a vagina? <laughs> uh, the story would proceed just as it did with Steve Rogers, but she won't be wearing a helmet. <laughs> That's the extent of the difference, really, as far as I can imagine. Uh, turning Peggy Carter into Captain Britain instead. I mean, what's what's going to change here? Is Hydra going to win? Is that what's going to happen? Because that'd be a pretty major change. Is she going to fuck up and fail? That'd be a pretty major change. But I'm pretty sure that this is going to end up with Hydra defeated and the Allies winning World War II. And maybe with Peggy frozen in ice. So the exact same story, but with a hammer? Okay. Or the other one. What if Star-Lord was black? And yet again, I can't really... <laughs> this is modern day superhero storytelling, isn't it? It's not like, again, what if Hydra won. That would be a pretty major goddamn upset. What if the Nazis had won the Second World War and Steve Rogers, or Peggy Carter if you wish, was mo was um, leading a guerrilla resistance? Yeah, that, that could be something. That could be interesting. What if Star-Lord died? That would be a pretty huge upset to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But what if they were a different gender or a different color? What? <laughs> I mean, I don't really see the massive differences here. Like, a major upset would be something like um, having the spider bite Osborne instead of Peter Parker. Changing Peter Parker to Patina Parker, not quite so much, really. Yeah. And there we have it. That's Marvel's What If. Another train wreck from Marvel in all due likelihood. Like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which was a confused mess of ideological nonsense. Like Loki, that's not turning out particularly well uh, yet either. Or oh, Marvel's WandaVision, where the producer was like, We are never going to have Wanda say that I can't control my powers. While she basically turns into a little mini weapon and, what, enslaves an entire village? I mean, she loses control of her powers, but she doesn't say that she loses control of her powers. <laughs> Vital difference, absolutely. But there's some interesting things here. Alonso continued, For the longest time we heard a woman-led film will never open. Except for, what, Aliens, uh, Tomb Raider, Kill Bill, details, details. Reality is a concept that we frequently disregard when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Captain Marvel made a lot of money. Yeah, that's tragic, isn't it? That's, that's some gas gonna come back to bite us. Then they always told us that Black Panther was never going to open and that nobody wanted a completely black cast. Yeah, nobody. Like, you know, the first Marvel cinematic hero, Blade. <laughs> or the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, another well-known flop. And these people live in a separate universe to the rest of it. Actually, no. See, 
I've been talking about this in the gatekeeping videos, haven't I? Where I'm like, we believe that they believe what they're saying. Nonsense. This is a lie to push a point. And the point? Let's see here now. But truthfully, this is a business. From a fiscal point of view, you are leaving money on the table by not representing. I think 51% of our audience is female. <laughs> 51% of the Marvel audience <laughs> is female. Right. I see. I, I question this statistic. I very much so do. And let me also point out something here. Let us for a moment entertain this idea, right? 51% of Marvel's audience are women. Do you think that 51% of women want to see... Uh, Peggy Carter, or do you think they want to see uh, this? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you're misreading your audience, honestly. I really do, because I know one reason why there might be a lot of women watching Marvel movies, and it ain't because of the representation. I mean, hell, it's a self-defeating argument. If, as you say, the, for the longest time nobody ever thought that a woman lead would be a thing, why the hell would 51% of your audience be female if representation is the most important part? Why would they go to watch Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, etc., if representation was really that goddamn important to them? Except if maybe there was indeed something else of more importante. <laughs> Who knows? And 28% of our audience is Hispanic. I don't know why it's just 28%. That sort of seems like a random number. If we don't represent the people that watch we make, eventually they'll go elsewhere. Because somebody else will figure it out. See, that's the thing. I don't believe so. Why, if that is really the truth, again, why does movies like Woke well, Ghostbuster flop so terribly? Why does Charlie's Angels fail so horrifically? Why did Terminator Hammond Edition absolutely crash and burn to the point of murdering one of the most resilient goddamn franchises in movie history? Quinky dinks, I guess. And of course, it's all about 50-50. We need to have exactly 50-50 for reasons. By 2025 this time. So in, what, four years, we are going to go from a room with three women to 17 men <laughs> to a 50-50 mix. Yeah, no, sounds, sounds reasonable. And how are we going to achieve this? Well, she doesn't know. It's, it's going to just have to be a community effort. It can't just be one group of people pushing for this, you understand. I don't know. Maybe you can just force them, I guess. Like, I would like to be a nurse. No, you're going to be an animator, thank you very much, for Marvel Studios. What? But I don't want to. Shh. Women's liberation is talking. I remember when it used to be about actual genuine freedom for people, but that was quite a while ago. Now, it's primarily about quotas. Because, of course, again, nobody actually asked the question, why is this the case? And again, 51% nonsense. Actual genuine nonsense. I mean, hell, I refer you to the, um, the whole thing I did about the making the argument one, where they brought up an article about wargaming, where they pointed out that in total, wargaming, not just Warhammer or 40k, wargaming as a larger umbrella, about 1.5 to 2% of the totality of wargamers were women. 1.5 to 2%. And is that because every single hobby shop has had a sign nailed onto the door? No whammon allowed? Is it because they've been chased out with high-pressurized water jets? No, it's because it tends to be a hyper-competitive goddamn environment. And usually, women don't tend to like that quite as much. But hey, we gotta social engineer some more, don't we? 
I'll also note that when I walk into a room, I do a head count of how many women there are. You know, ein, zwei, drei, west, untermensch. If there's only three women in the room and there's 17 men, I usually make this comment, Oh, there's a lot of men here today. <laughs> I imagine. Is it passive aggressive? Uh, yeah. I'll probably say so. But no, no, it's not passive aggressive. It's only passive aggressive if you have a guilty conscience. Ah, yes. The men in the room should stand up, walk out into the hallway, and then just wave on over one of the other 17 women just standing out there in line, just waiting for a chance to come in. <laughs> they probably have to pay someone to show up at that point. Still, at this level, and to be fair, to be fair though, I also don't want a room full of women. I truly believe balance is good. The male, the female, and the other. All of that is good for us. Is it possible? Yes. No, I don't. I don't think so, actually. And of course, the crowning achievement. If this was really something worth doing, if there was a point to this, if this was something that would come naturally, then it would be quite easily easy. You just you put up a level playing field, allow equal opportunity for men, women, and other to enter into the field, and then over the course of a couple decades you'd have 50-50, because everyone has an equal interest and everyone has an equal opportunity, right? But no, instead, is it erosive and tiresome and an everyday chore? Yes. Do you have to stay committed every hour of every day? Yes. I love how they make it sound like it's some kind of vast-scale mining enterprise. Like, yes, we're holding up the literal earth here. It requires constant job and constant supervision. Because otherwise, the powers of the patriarchy will crush down upon us. Oh, heavens. And what I want to point out to as well here is, look at this. Three comments. This isn't an archive. This is the actual page here. And this was set up in June 14th. Three comments. God, nobody cares. Nobody goddamn cares. If it weren't for the fact that there are full Marvel Studios backing this diversity bullshit, none of this would exist. Literally none of it. Which again is why it is so darnably important that you continue the gatekeeping endeavors. Because these studios have been sold the false narrative that, yeah, there's 51% of their audience are women. And they only want to watch women in their roles. They're not watching because of, again, other reasons. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly? I think you'd have a whole lot more success with the female audience if you were to go for a little bit more in the way of good old-fashioned sexism. But hey, <laughs> what do I know? Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good sexist day.